Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, depending on what side of the pond you're on, and welcome to Across the Pub, Episode 2. My name is Phil Kennedy, and I am joined by Darren Woodhead and Tony Robinson today, uh, and we each have a pint of our favorite brew and are about to talk about our favorite football club, the good old Aki Stanley. Uh, Welcome to the pub, guys. Nice to be here, and uh, I I think it's I think it's Phil's round anyway because he was the last one in. <laughs> well, well, I haven't uh, quite I gotten it for him yet. Uh, but if you listen to last night's episode uh, that I recorded with Aaron on Arson Ales and, and hear what beer that I selected, you you guys might not want to have me by the round. <laughs> right, well, on that note, it was on the list <laughs> further down. On the list further down, Phil. So tell us about the uh, long-awaited comeback of Mr. Aaron Ayres. What's the latest show then? Yeah, well, let, let's start with that because because uh, Aaron Ayres, as you you may know, is one of the co-founders of the show. And uh, over the last three or four months, he's uh, you know been busy with uh, you know homeschooling and things like that. With uh, you know obviously the COVID lockdown has kind of thrown everybody's schedule. Uh, but uh, Aaron did uh, return last night uh, for a new series that we're doing. That's called Ars and ales uh, which uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry you got to be got to be careful when you say that aren't you <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so it, it's basically what what it talks about it, it's we're talking about arsenal uh, and then we each pick a uh, wood beer that, that we review so it, it's a, an arsenal and beer show and we recorded the first episode of that last night uh, and that will be out uh, today yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, <laughs> something different. I'll be uh, it, watching it, well, listening to it eagerly. Uh, he's come back, so yeah, if he's still got the, the touch, Mr. Aaron Ayers and the humour, I'm sure he has. <laughs> he's all, he, he certainly has an airs about him, doesn't he? <laughs> um, and, you know, yeah, the, the, I think it was, uh, it, you know, with, with the Orse in Ales show, uh, you know, as uh, you guys both know, uh, Aaron and I have a long history of supporting Arsenal together and a long history of drinking beer together. So it was kind of a natural. Well, I, I just got, I, what I'm looking forward to is I'll, I'm, I'm looking forward, obviously, you listen to it, but uh, I'm going to be up front now. I'll, I'll, I'll fast forward through the arsenal and listen to the beer stuff. Well, the beer stuff is first, <laughs> so that that's good. We, we talked about the beer first, and, and since that will be out uh, before this, uh, it wouldn't really be a spoiler alert. For me to say that I went with the quantity over quality for the first episode, and I actually reviewed Natural Light, so that's why you guys might not want to have me buy the pint today. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, as you get older, you go for um, uh, quality rather than quantity. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, do they do they even have that beer over in England? No, natural no, light. Can, no, it's no. it's basically the the cheaper version of Bud Light. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, there is there is that available, and the the Coors Light. It's just that, uh, yeah. I just walk straight past those in the supermarket. They don't interest me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've actually been to the Coors factory, which is in uh, Denver, Colorado, and. Uh, I, I tell you, when I was at the factory and you sample it, it tastes a lot better than it does at the store. So, I mean, I, I think that's the key is is you, you actually have to travel to the factory and drink it there. As uh, we say in Canada, we uh, as we say in Canada about American beer, it, it's like making love in a canoe. <laughs> <laughs> Because you're 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 dashing your water. <laughs> <laughs> have we got a sound effect for that one, Tony? Yeah, it, I'll, it, I'll have to find one for. for that. <laughs> okay, okay, enough. Uh, right. enough. Now, good stuff. So, yeah, Phil or Darren, you're up. 
Right, okay. So next thing I wanted to talk about, Phil, we've had many discussions on Messenger and WhatsApp, etc., about your new hobby that you're doing on eBay. So explain to me again, because I didn't get it the first time, and to everyone who's listening, <laughs> just about yeah. what you're doing on there, taking across the pitch onto eBay. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I guess that it's actually, it's not so much that it's a new hobby. It's more of a an old hobby being turned into a, a new business venture. Uh, and, and so with Across the Pitch, you know, of course, we do the uh, uh, League One review shows. And, you know, this show here is usually about current topics. And the, the Arsenal show will be about current topics. But we also do uh, the legend shows uh, that, that you do darren and uh you know a lot of across the pitch has always been about uh not just uh, the sport that's happening now but also the history of it uh and, and you know once you get into sports history that that also brings in the uh, the memorabilia aspect of things and i know that, that darren i know you're a big memorabilia aficionado and, and tony I, I know you have a collection of of shirts as well so i, mm-hmm. I think this is you know definitely something that, that anybody that's interested in sports history will will have a bit of a, an interest in the the memorabilia aspect uh so what we're doing Doing is uh, so. So we have an eBay store called Across the Pitch now, and uh, we're we're getting into the uh, the buying and selling of uh, sports cards and memorabilia. And uh, you know, we will have uh, football slash soccer cards, depending on uh, what what you want to call it. I actually have a, a shipment of some uh, uh, rare cards from top players like uh, Aguero and, and De Bruyne and Has are coming in so you know all all the big names are going to be for sale but uh, you, you know what what we're really going w- with this is not just so much the selling of the cards but uh, an actual uh, another uh, interactive thing that we're going to be doing uh, in addition to the podcast is we're going to be now uh, we're going to start within the next few months doing uh, live what are called case breaks on uh, on eBay and, and on YouTube yeah, yeah so go on. Tell us a little bit more about case breaks, Phil, because uh, <laughs> this is where you've got eBay's fine. I'm fine with eBay. Case breaks is uh, another world to me. So tell yeah, us about well, that. well, case breaks is kind of the uh, I'd say it's something that's come along in the last ten years or so, but it's especially popular. Uh, and then, so how how a case break would work? And I'll I'll just use the the Premier League as an example because that'd probably be the the easiest example. So let's say that, that I went out uh, and I purchased a case of the uh, latest uh, set of Premier League cards that come out. So we'll just, you know, we'll say 2020 Premier League. I go out and buy a case of that and we'll say a case is eight boxes of cards. Then each one has 100 cards in it. I'm, I'm just making up some numbers right now. So then I go out and I buy that case of cards. Uh, and then what I do is I would go on eBay and I create a listing for each team, you know, Arsenal, United, all, all 20 teams. And then people get bid on their team. So people bid, you know, I'll bid $20 to get all the Arsenal cards or I'll bid five cents to get all the Spurs cards or or something like that. (laughs) And then, uh, so how it works is then whoever wins the, the auction for each of the 20 teams, they own the rights to all of the cards from that team that, that come out of the case. Then I go live on YouTube open up the eight boxes of cards and then everybody gets whatever cards were in that case for the the team that that they won. So, I mean, basically, uh, it's a way for people to uh, collect cards and acquire the cards for their favorite team without having to buy the whole case. And then, uh, you know, that's basically, you know, how it works out. And then uh, uh, what what questions do you guys have on that? No, that should be good fun. The only question I've got, Phil, if we get start doing uh, League One and League Two, etc., 
case breaks and we find any with some Stevenage cards in, just put a lock on the case, will you? Don't open it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, that's oh, awesome. it's good. It's yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, one thing that, that we have found is that right now for League One, there, there's not a whole lot of licensed cards out there. Uh, one of the things I have discussed with Peter Latham is uh, at least producing a set of Accrington Stanley cards. So that is something that it could be in the, the upcoming future. Yeah, that yeah, sounds interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, just want to, uh, if you ever run across a, a Homer Wagner card, uh, Phil, put me down for 20 bucks, okay? H- Honus <laughs> Wagner. H- oh. Honus Wagner. And that's actually a, well, a listen, great... Uh, no, uh, listen, Phil. Homer, Homer's his younger brother. He didn't quite have a good a career, so... <laughs> Well, well, that's actually a, a great lead into uh, a, a little segment that I put together here for you guys. Uh, and I'm going to quiz you on the value of some of the most uh, famous cards uh, that have ever been sold. And, uh, and Honus Wagner, uh, he was a, an early 1900s uh, baseball player uh, in, in the U.S. And his 1909. Uh, tobacco trading card is considered to be the most valuable sports card in the world. Uh, do you guys have any idea what the uh, the most valuable and expensive one recently sold for? Four, four million. Something ridiculous. This. Four, yeah, four million U.S. You're you're not far off. Uh, three point two million uh, was the, uh, wow. the most recent sale, and, and, and that particular card uh, that, that sold for three point two million has quite a bit of history behind it. Uh, because so, uh, I, sh- I, sh- I should have said four mil. I should have said four million Canadian because that would have been bang on. <laughs> yeah, anyway, you sorry, would have converted right there. Yeah. <laughs> But, but that particular card set out. Now, the, to start off with, the, the 1909 Honus Wagner card is particularly valuable because not only is he a Hall of Fame player, but the cards were actually originally distributed in, uh, in packs of cigarettes. Uh, and he didn't want to be associated with cigarettes and demanded that his card be pulled. Uh, so there's something around only like 25 to 50 of them that, that even still exist but this one particular one that it's in the best condition of all uh, it's a very famous card in the early 90s at one point Wayne Gretzky actually owned it and, and at that well, point he, with, he owned it with Bruce McNall that, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. that owned it but then he, he went to jail for uh, embezzlement or something. So <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, so I mean, back in the early 90s when, when Gretzky bought it, I think he paid like 200K and now it's gone to 3.2 million. <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think he's hurting for money, especially with his son-in-law just went in the, uh, the Masters the other day. So uh, uh, he's, uh, he's certainly not, uh, not uh, needing of the money. Uh, which leads us on to another topic that I wanted to ask, and I hate to bring this back to uh, to football, but um, I just we haven't had uh, uh, Darren on, and, and I just wanted to get his opinion of what he thinks of uh, the last month for for Stanley. Uh, you know, without going into a match by match analysis, just sort what's your thoughts on on the last month, Darren and, and Phil, of course. Uh, well, afterwards. Oh yeah, okay. For, well, just from my point of view. Good and the bad, right? The good. I've watched all the games. Uh, fantastic results. Uh, teams playing well. You know, the tight games, they all seem to be tight games, but we're winning. The bad, I'm really missing the football now, to be quite honest. I mean, n- not being able to go to games is really killing me. I-, I watched the game last night and it does, it's just a completely different scenario. It's not It's not just the 90 minutes, it's the, you know, the going to the games, having a drink. You talk to your mates and family about who's going to be in the team, etc. And it's just really starting to to get to me. I must admit, I, I'm sure there's quite a lot of Stanley fans the same. Because, well, let's face it: if you're a fan of a lower league club in general, it's because you like going to a match. Where if you just want to watch football on TV, you're a Premier League fan, aren't you? So that's yep. where I'm at. Really good, good start from the team. I'm missing it like mad. Uh, Phil. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I could definitely understand what you're saying, Darren, because I, I mean, for me and, and obviously for Tony, other than not being able to take his trip, it doesn't change our experience a whole lot because we're over in North America watching on iFollow anyway. But, you know, I just look back to the uh, the Phoenix Rising season and, and, you know, when you have your home team that you're a season ticket holder for uh, and you're, you're used to going to the matches, it's just, it's not the same experience to, to watch watch it at home and, and you just you, you miss so much uh you know it, it's it's like we say i mean when, when you go to the the wham stadium you're, you're not just going to a football game it's an event you've got the fan zone you've got the the supporters and you've got the pound a point after a win and you know it's just yeah. all, all of that stuff goes by the wayside when you turn it into a tv show well, and and for me, I, I, I got to say, I agree with Phil because I'm used to watching it, uh, you know, sitting on the on the city and, and watching it on the uh, iPhone. So that uh, it it's strange with no fans or not hearing the uh, the singing and everything like that. But, uh, um, yeah, I think it's um, it's one of those. You, for me, I'm just. I think the, they're winning when they're, they're winning, but they're winning in a way that's. It's not say ugly, but they're uh, they're not hitting all on eight cylinders right now. It's like they're firing on six out of eight. Yet you know, good teams yeah. make good teams make a way of making their own luck and winning. So uh, I think that's an encouragement because if they do start playing uh, to their potential, uh, then I think we'll see uh, not only the results but some more more goals, which is obviously from my point of view. I think and everybody's we need to start mm-hmm. scoring some more goals. Yeah, Tony, on our review show, I amended my uh, my prediction from Stanley from 12th to 8th, and I think what I've seen over the past few months, or it can be the past few weeks, is enough to make me feel more confident about 8th, but not enough to want me to say that, that they're going to go any higher than that. Well, as we'll, we'll see when they do those uh, makeup games and uh because it, 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 they don't mean anything until you get some points uh, on the board with that, and we'll see what happens. Uh, which we're talking about fans not getting in, uh, and what Darren just said about missing the game uh, experience. Uh, I was reading about the AFL uh, um, come December second about the possibility of returning, uh, letting some fans return. But I think uh, Darren, if I'm correct, uh, is isn't that based on? the tier system and, and what tier you're in, in the region to whether some fans will get in or not. Yeah. So basically most of the, or all of the Northwest is likely to be in tier three, which uh, would basically mean that all, all the grounds would still be closed and for the foreseeable future. So that brings in more questions, doesn't it? Around the fairness really of having some, some uh, teams who can have the the fans at games, say the likes of a, an area with very little COVID, say Devon. Uh, you've got you know Plymouth, etc. Down there, they'd be able to have a their home, uh, well, an element of the home support. And Accrington wouldn't. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. Is it churlish to to question it? Is it just the way the cookie crumbles? I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, that's a that's a tough one because if you're in the area where fans can get back in, you're all for it. But when you're not, it's a, it's a system that doesn't seem fair. So I think uh, it's from, from a uh, financial point of view, it's uh, certainly a bigger impact on on teams in in tier three, and and that has to be in areas like Lancashire and the in the Midlands, and where there's a lot of uh, a lot of those teams. And and as I say, if you're in tier three, uh, you're uh, your SOL for uh, fans and uh, and additional income. So yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's it's certainly something where 
uh, it's inequitable because I, I mean, if you're a, a team that's in an area that's on complete lockdown, or if you're in a team that that's in an area that's on tier one, that is absolutely no doing of the team. The team doesn't have any control over, you know, how much of the virus is in their area. So, I mean, to me, I, I think it needs to be kind of an all or nothing thing because otherwise you're unleveling the playing field. Yeah, yeah, and agreed. there's another, there's a, the football element as well. So, I mean, you've got, say, for instance, uh, Accrington have got two away games coming up. They've got Sunderland away that's going to be closed, and then they've Portsmouth away. It's going to have a massive impact to, the, you know, you've, you like, so the, uh, we've got a young goalkeeper, Toby Savin. So he stood in front of 10,000 orphans for a game. That, that's got to change everything, hasn't it? Oh, well, yeah, he's, he, he, yeah. He's just not had that experience, has he, at this level? Mm, so it doesn't seem a level playing field for me, but we'll see what happens. Um, that brings us into, um, Phil, I think you wanted to talk about surprise player of the season so far. Well, yeah, and I think that, that Darren actually just mentioned a guy that, that has to be mine uh, because I, I think that it wasn't necessarily that we expected this guy not to play well. It's just that it, it was really an unknown, uh, and that would be Toby Savin. I, I mean, he had a guy that we had seen a, a couple times in some cup matches, but, but you've got a keeper who has come in playing his first league matches ever this year. Year, uh, and we just watched his fifth clean sheet in a row. He's got six clean sheets in uh, 10 matches now. Uh, save percentage around 75%. Uh, he's uh, allowing uh, you know, like one goal per 90 minutes. And he was a complete unknown. So for me, he's got to be our surprise player of the year. Darren? Yep. I'm, I'm in agreement on that. Phil, for once, we agree on something. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, no, there's no argument from me. Uh, no, uh, he's, got, he's got to be. You're right, Phil. He, he's, the way he's come in, uh, it's a long time since I've seen a goalkeeper this young. He's just, I thought, first few games, we'd get somebody on loan and then he'd go back to being on the bench. But mm-hmm. he, he's getting better and better, isn't he? He looks more confident every game. I yeah, think he's I, responded to that. I, I feel like once, uh, once we did bring in uh, Baxter, the loan keeper, he really kind of said, no, this is my job and I'm not letting it get away. I I, yeah. I agree with both you guys, but not, we can't have everybody going, all three of us saying uh, Toby Savin. So um, I'm, I'm going to say uh, Joe Pritchard. And the reason I say Joe is, and I've got to put Joe at, at number two on the list. Savin is definitely uh, there, but I, I got to give uh, kudos to Joe because I think he's, he's actually, we saw him last year, but I think this year he's, he's picked it up a notch. And uh, although his last couple of games hasn't been his best, he still looks like he can do things when he has the ball uh, more so than, than a few of the players. I know Butcher is doing well, but Butcher is new, so I, you can't really say that he's a, a, a surprise. Uh, but I think we got to look at uh, at Joel uh, as uh, uh, being a surprise uh, player for um, as far as compared to last season. I think yep. you're he's showing you're his versatility, on. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you're definitely spot on with it, Tony. I remember in our preview show that we had specifically said that uh, for Stanley to be successful this year, that Joe Pritchard and Dion Charles were, were two guys that specifically needed to take their game up another level from last year. And I think we've seen that from both of them. But, but for Pritchard, he's just really become the new clicker. Well, and, and um, I think uh, I'm glad to see Sangari back because I think he's uh, he's going to slot right in and he's going to uh, uh, he's going to improve the midfield even more. So uh, it's unfortunate we didn't get a chance to see more of him, but I think he's going to he's going to make uh, make a difference too. So 
Any uh, any other guys that, that we should have as honorable mentions? Uh, I mean, everybody's played really well. I, I mean, I don't think that there's really a, a guy on the uh, the roster that I could pinpoint and say, you know, this guy needs to be better. Uh, I think one guy that really flies under the radar and, you know, he, he might not be in the starting 11 once everybody gets healthy and whatnot, uh, but that's Harvey Rogers. I mean, that that guy has stepped in a, in any role that, that Coleman has needed them to hit, especially with the, the injuries we've had a, at the wingback position and, and him coming in uh, and playing at that opposite wingback. And, you know, he's really a big part of the reason that those five clean sheets have happened. Yeah, I like uh, Col- uh, Colby. Right. Yeah, like Colby Bishop said after the match, uh, they're all a unit. They're when when the other team has the ball, they're all part of the defensive unit, so they all contribute, and he's he's certainly done his part as well. Absolutely. Okay, Phil, you were you're up next. Okay, uh, so now Darren, there's uh, quite a bit going on with the supporters club, which is uh, you know this is the time of year when uh, normally. Christmas parties and things like that are getting planned. And, you know, unfortunately that's probably not going to happen this year. So what, uh, what types of plans do, uh, do the supporters club have uh, for Christmas in lieu of the usual parties and such? Right. Okay. So I spoke to Peter today, uh, obviously restricted with the current situation and the market shop hasn't been able to open. So what they have done now, they've got a, a marketplace, a virtual marketplace on the website. So if you go to onstanleyon.com, there's a Christmas a grotto in there, Xmas grotto. Uh, all sorts of things going on that you can buy, uh, Christmas cards. There's uh, a calendar's. You know, coasters. There's a, a new clock. Have you seen that, Phil? I bet you've got one of those on your wall already, haven't you? I have seen it. I, I haven't had a chance <laughs> to order one yet. I, I'm I usually wait and put together oh, come a on, big Phil. order. I, I put together a big order all at once so I could just get yeah. a huge box shipped yeah. to me. Waiting for boxing yeah. day. Sales. Quite good, actually. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tony will be waiting for the sales. He likes the bargain. <laughs> Might get it off price on boxing, yeah. So, uh, just so a, yeah, think, there's all sorts of. Uh, I think we're cutting out here. Just a second. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So there's obviously quite a few draw Christmas draw tickets you can get involved with as well. Uh, buy tickets. So if you can get on there and support them. Then another thing Peter was telling me about that the, the uh, Remembrance Garden was featured quite heavily on Sky Sports and ITV. So, which is nice bit of kudos for the, the club and for all the people who've put a lot of hard work into producing that garden, which is looking stunning. Uh, and the final item, the uh, AGM is on the 17th of December on Zoom. So you can get involved with that as well if you want to. And um, again, using more interaction, interactive uh, kind of medium like Zoom to just keep it all going and shopping on the website. So anything that you can do to help the cause, by all means, get on there and uh, see what you fancy. Fantastic stuff. Eh? And the Memorial Garden, every time I see pictures, eh, it just becomes more and more impressive. And eh, it's really, to me, it's the, the magnum opus of the, the supporters' trust, if you will. Well, the, uh, yep. the the ceremony they had for uh, Remembrance Day was uh, was uh, uh, top notch, and and the coverage that they did and the video they made of that was uh, was uh, by studio. Uh, uh, it was just outstanding. So, uh, all uh, yeah, kudos to everybody involved. It looks great, and uh, I can't wait to go um, uh, sit there next uh, fall and. Uh, and reflect on uh, people of my family that used to go and watch Stanley. So I, uh, I think it means a lot to a lot of people. Fantastic. Well All right. Well, okay. uh, Tony, I, I think that you had a little surprise ready for, uh, for Darren and I. Yeah. A couple of little questions. And, but before I get into that, we didn't, uh, I just want to acknowledge that uh, people may not know in the UK tomorrow is, in the, in the United States of America is their app is their Thanksgiving. So 
happy Thanksgiving to Phil and to all our uh, uh, listeners and friends in, in the United States. And uh, be safe, be well, and enjoy your turkey. Um, and then on a more sad note, uh, I just was reading before we come on uh, that Diego Maradona has uh, passed away at the age of 60. Um, so um, it's a sad, sad to see somebody go at that early age. He, he's at a, he was a, one of the best footballers. I think you can, we'll all agree in the top five uh, in history, uh, but he lived a hard life and uh, unfortunately he's passed away. Um, okay. On to, uh, on to my, uh, uh, little trivia questions. I'm going to ask a question, one of Phil and then one of Darren, and uh, and you have to put your um, iPods down, your your uh, telephones, and everything like that, because this is just going from uh, uh, what you know, what you can remember. Uh, number one, uh, oh, you're up first, Phil. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> can you new came? Can you name two U.S. based football teams that George Best played for? Oh boy. New York Cosmos? Nope. Uh, Tampa Bay Rowdies? Nope. I'll give you a, I'll give you a clue. There's two of the teams are in in California. Uh, I, I'm going to have to take a pass. I, I don't remember what the NASL teams were in California. Well, uh, there's one team. I know that's... one of them. I know one of them. Go ahead. Go ahead, Darren. Go ahead. What... Uh, LA. Los Angeles. Yes. A yes. Aztecs. Yes. Yeah, yes. I have no idea on the other one. He uh, he played for them no twice. Idea. The other one was for, right. uh, Fort Lauderdale Strikers in 78, 79, okay. and San Jose Earthquakes in 1980, 81. Ah. Okay. Right. That's who he got his uh, famous goal. There's a good goal on that, isn't there? Uh, San Jose Earthquakes. It is a fantastic <laughs> goal on YouTube if you ever want to see. He takes it, dribbles around the whole, everyone on the opposing team. Yeah, he, if you look at his, uh, his teams he played for, uh, there is some there's some strange teams on there uh, that he did play for he, that he turned out. But, uh, um, okay, Darren, you're up next. Um, uh, you, we've, and this is going to be, a, we're going to talk about this later, but upcoming guests, but um, uh, on the show. Um, Dave Thomas that was a, uh, a Burnley player and, and ended up with uh, playing for England, started his career at Burnley. Can you tell me which uh, North American uh, football team that he played for? I thought you were going to ask um, what I'm North look. American fast food restaurant he found. No, no. I'm, I'm no. okay. I'm okay with this one because I've actually been speaking to him this week. Uh, and it is Vancouver White Caps. Very good. Uh, bonus point. Do you know yeah, what year? That, that is low. Uh, this is a wild guess. Oh, 94? 80, 80, 83? 81. You're close. 81. All right. Okay, Phil, this is an easier question. Okay. Uh, has Darren ever been to the U.S. of A? No. Darren? Is that no. true or false? Oh, uh, that's true. The nearest I've ever got is Mexico. <laughs> they wouldn't let me over the border. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can understand that one. See, that was an easy oh, one, I've, Phil. Uh, I've been around Central America, but I've never actually been in North America. Did you actually fly over U.S. airspace? Because that could count. Oh, yeah. Well, well Mexico, is, Mexico is considered North America. Yeah, yeah. but I was saying the question uh, was the state, Phil. So, yeah, oh, anyway. no, no. I, 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 yeah. No. yeah. Okay, Darren, okay. can you name a professional sports team in uh, Toronto where I am located? Any professional sports team in Toronto, or Toronto as they say here? Blizzard. Uh, that Is wasn't, that that, they, there was a blizzard. They're not anymore. But, so I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you half a point on that. Half a point. Half a point. Uh, the the teams that were, were they a, were they a soccer team? Maple no, they were. Leaves. They were Blizzard. Were a, a, a football team, and uh, actually, I believe Peter Lorimer uh, ended up playing for them at the oh, time. Right. Okay, so, they're in Argonauts. There's Toronto Argonauts is a CFL team. There's Toronto Raptors baseball. Or sorry, basketball. The Blue Jays. The Toronto Blue Jays is uh, baseball. Toronto SC is the Major League Soccer team. 
And then the, I guess probably the world famous, except for in England, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs, which is the, the, uh, one of the big uh, ice hockey teams in the NHL. They're the spurs of the NHL, basically. <laughs> yeah, they have, they have <laughs> one for a long time. Okay, Phil, you're up next. Can, can, can you name the pub that's just steps away from the Wham Stadium? The Crown. Oh, wait, 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 because that was the old one. No, um, don't don't overthink it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Crown Pub, isn't it? Yep, you're correct. Well done. Okay, Darren, can you name uh, a professional sports team in Phoenix that doesn't have the word rising in it? I'm sure he can. Yep, I watched them a couple of weeks ago. Suns. Oh, yes, very good. And what, what sport yeah. do they play? I- Basketball. Very Derek good. is a secret basketball aficionado. I am. A, yeah, every now and again, in the middle of lockdown, I've started uh, watching little bits of basketball, and I've quite enjoyed it, actually. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's good. I, the other teams are... I've blown your mind. That's on him now. You've been doing your homework. Um, there's, <laughs> Just pure I, like, I like the, uh, the name of the Diamondbacks in baseball, and then there's the Cardinals... In uh, in football yeah. and and the Phoenix is it Cardinals Arizona? Cardinals are our real team. It's a it's it's the Arizona Cardinals. It was Phoenix Cardinals at one point. Coyotes also are now Arizona Coyotes. Were Phoenix at one point. Um, so uh, so so yeah, but I I don't consider the Cardinals to be our real team because they originally started in Chicago and they moved to St. Louis and then they moved to Phoenix. So I mean, that's why I support the Dallas Cowboys because historically Phoenix was in Dallas Cowboys territory, so I still consider them our real team. Well, and it's the like uh, MK Dons, MK yeah. Dons all over this, isn't it? Yeah, and the, uh, <laughs> they actually have the uh, title, I guess, of the oldest continuous NHL mm-hmm. or NFL franchise, which is if you ever get in a, 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 a trivia contest in the States, that's a good one to win a drink because a lot of people would go with the Bears or the Packers, and yet it's the Arizona uh, Cardinals. So anyway, uh, no, that was uh, – I just I wanted to have a bit of fun with some – Hey, I have, I have yeah. an interesting uh, one for you, and uh, uh, this one. Do you know how the Chicago Bears got their name? No, I don't. No, no. Because Chicago already had a baseball team called the Cubs, and they figured since football players are bigger than baseball players, they should be the Bears. True story. Oh, wow. It makes sense. If I'll tell you one thing. If it's not true, I buy that one because it doesn't sound logical. <laughs> the uh, that's it. Packers, who you mentioned, are actually called the Packers because they were originally sponsored by a packing company. Yep. Cardinals are named the Cardinals, not really after the bird, but because the first uniforms they got were Cardinal red. Wow. We're, I'm going to leave this podcast a lot more smarter than when I came in. <laughs> I keep telling you guys that the, the actually association football is a sport I know the least about. <laughs> anyway, that's, uh, that's it for my little pub quiz question, so... Back to uh, uh, back to you. All right. Well, Darren, uh, first of all, I just want to give you a, a massive round of applause because the the guests that you have been bringing on to the show recently are, are just some of the the best that we've ever had. I, I think the the Ilias Khan interview, for example, was one of our uh, our highest streaming episodes ever. I think we got like three hundred streams in the first 72 hours and i understand that you have another murderer's row of guests lined up and yeah and you, you know what that term means now so uh tell us a yeah, bit about yeah. that right so we we've got the list we haven't got we haven't got all the dates because we're running out of time for the end of this year so it'll be a case of squeezing people in when we can this year and going into next year which will be good uh, so, like you said, we had we've had a some top guests on this month. And like you say, Elias Khan was fantastic, and Paul Fletcher, you know, he had an interesting story to tell. Uh, so, on that 
then Paul Fletcher actually put me in touch with another guy who's going to be coming on, which is Dave Thomas. Uh, he, he had a fantastic career, played for England in the 1970s, also played for QPR, Everton and Burnley. So we were quite uh, thrilled to talk to Dave this week and he, he agreed to come on the show. We started talking about you know what we were going to be talking about, etc. Really nice guy. He's got a fantastic backstory as well. Really remarkable. Uh, so that's going to be really... Well, I'm, I'm personally, I'm really excited about that. Good news is Tony's going to be joining me on some of these Burnley veteran series uh, podcasts with his knowledge of Burnley, especially back in the day when he used to be a regular down at Turf Moor in the 60s and 70s. So yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, Darren. Sorry to interrupt. I, I uh, And especially the Dave Thomas, uh, because I was at the match when he made his, uh, his uh, league debut. So... It's going to be a thrill for me to uh, to speak to somebody that that I saw play uh, in his first league match. I'm I'm really looking forward to it. So yeah, excellent. Uh, not and um, going back to Stanley, we've got a couple of guys coming on. We've got Dean Winard, who's played tons of football league games for the club, uh, mostly in League Two. Uh, we've got a, a guy called Lee Rogerson, who was a big favourite in the non-league days. He's he's going to be coming on. And then we've also got Karen Fazakli still to fit in yet uh, when we can prize her away from uh, work at the BBC. It's not always been easy to, to uh, pin her down for a, a, a date, but she's really keen to come on. And also the Burnley press officer, Darren Bentley. So he's going to be giving us a, an insight of the press workings at a football league club and behind the scenes, which is, uh, um, we'll be looking forward to that one as well. Yeah, he'll be, uh, he'll be, uh, so all the guests you, you, you're lining up are, are tremendous. And uh, uh, I mean, yeah, Darren Bentley will be uh, interesting to listen to because of the ins and outs and workings behind the scenes of uh, at Burnley uh, and in the Premier League. So that, that should be interesting to, for a lot of people. Fantastic. I, I can't wait. And, uh, and like I said there, the uh, the Legend Series interviews are, are just kind of taking things to the next level. And, you know, there's just so much exciting stuff to uh, to look ahead to, especially with the form that Stanley's in. I mean, th- this is just historic stuff. I mean, sometimes when you're watching the matches, uh, it, it's it, – it takes a minute to kind of sit back and say, this is the highest Ashrington Stanley has ever been at any table ever. And, you know, you just kind of sit back and enjoy the ride. Well, and like you said, and and Darren mentioned earlier, uh, it's a, it's just, it's a shame that the fans aren't able to enjoy the ride in person so far. And I think that's one of the things that, that Phil and I are working on for an episode of extra is, uh, you know, the impact on the fan, uh, this year and, and the, the interest level at, uh, in, uh, in the football, uh, Premier league and the, and the other leagues. So uh, we're working on a format for that, but hopefully we can have a good discussion on, uh, an episode of extra about that, Phil. I look forward to that, Tony. And, and you know, I, I'm just excited that uh, that we have all of these uh, new kind of mini-series kind of coming together. And, uh, you know, I, I think for the first two years of the show and uh, actually just looking at my uh, calendar here uh, today, November 25th, 2020, actually marks two year the two year anniversary of the time that we interviewed Scott Brown for our first ever interview. So just kind of thinking about how uh, how far we've come in that time. And also uh, Scott, we're we're wishing you uh, all the uh, the best in in healing as our friend Scott recovers from a, a serious uh, leg injury that he uh, he suffered playing for Warrington this year. We were definitely uh, rooting for Scott and, uh, and hope to have him back on the show. But, uh, you know, just looking back, it's hard to believe that it's been uh, two years of producing episodes that are fully pasteurized and FDA approved. <laughs> and that's uh, <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, Phil. That's, uh, I, I, yeah, well I, done, I, Phil. 
Uh, did you want to uh, uh, say anything about my uh, the number of guests and people that I brought on the show, Phil? Or we just let that one we just let that one go. Well, well Tony, I would <laughs> say that the, uh, the the thing that you brought to the show is, is like uh, like Darren said, you're you're the hall of PDOs all the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and, and no, no, but but in, in all seriousness, Tony, you have been the the catalyst behind the uh, the growth of the show. Uh, we're we're approaching thirty five thousand streams right now, uh, and you joined the like, like I said. So we're twenty four months into this now. You joined the cast full time. I want to say back in about February, and of our thirty five thousand streams. Streams, roughly 25,000 of those have come since February. So, <laughs> I mean... Uh, and, I, yeah. and I think my family has listened to a good five of them. So, thank you, everybody, for... Uh, for uh, putting yeah. putting my numbers up, <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, to- Tony's uh, Tony's our Seamus Keneally of the team. I think he he keeps things ticking along and never gets the credit. So, <laughs> yeah. I, I like that, yeah. you in the background. I'll take that. Thanks, and, and Tony, uh, if, I, if I ever uh, help somebody say, hey, I could do an interview on an hour's notice, uh, I always know who I can count on to co-host that with me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, as long as- I get, uh, get busy on a Sunday and need to record on a Monday, you're always, uh, you know, willing to to adjust the schedule. And I, I cannot say enough words about how much I, I appreciate your contributions to the show, Tony. Well, as long as you don't interrupt my nap time, I'm uh, I'm okay. I'm usually I'm usually <laughs> you know I'm usually available. But no, it's been it's been a lot of fun and uh, and working with you guys and. Uh, you know what? When you talk football, how can it not be fun? Uh, amen exactly. to that. Well, guys, I think that uh, my beer is empty, and it's only about one ten p.m. here, so I, I better not have another one this early in the day. Oh, it was my round too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gentlemen. On Stanley on. Cheers. On Stanley on. Cheers. 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 Cheers.